If you clicked on this video, I'm imagining it's because you want to move abroad, right? So probably a stunning destination like this. The one thing that I found is that people are held back by money. How do I afford to move? How much money do I need to save? What's the cost of living that's gonna work for me overseas? Well, if those are your questions, this is the video for you. Earlier this week, I had the pleasure of chatting to Rashida Dow and the wonderful Stephanie Perry. In this video, we cover everything from setting your budget, to creating a location independent business, to converting your work to something that you can do from anywhere in the world. It's really full of gems and tips that I know you need to stop watching YouTube, to stop putting stuff on Pinterest and actually take action to making your move abroad a reality. If you're really serious about taking action, click the link in the description below um, and you can sign up for the Exodus Summit that takes place in October where you can join a plethora of women who will be sharing their experiences that I have no doubt will be useful for you. My internet connection is a tiny bit dodgy in this video, but you will get the gems. Rashida and Stephanie definitely deliver. Anyhow, that's enough for me. Let's jump into today's video. How did you two approach it? What was your approach to having a move abroad budget and how definitive do you think that factor is in being able to move abroad with ease? When I decided to move abroad, I already knew I wanted to, I didn't know that I wanted to move abroad. I knew that I wanted to move to Mexico City. That makes sense. It wasn't like I want to move out of the US. It was, I've been to Mexico City and I love it here and I want to live here. And so I'd been, I'd visited a few times and I had a good idea of what the cost of living was. So I already kind of had the numbers kind of figured out before I even thought about moving. And so it was kind of a different approach to it than a lot of people take. I'd been there, I stayed for six months um, maybe on like my fifth visit, I ended up staying for like six months, oh. um, before I truly, truly moved down and I got residency. And at that time it was easy to figure out like what things cost, what, what will housing cost, what all of these different factors I was able to figure out by being here for an extended amount of time. So that's how I figured it out. And did the budget that you end, ended up with after the six month period differ quite a lot from what you thought it would cost? Yes. Um, yes, because I have, when I first moved down here, it was moved to Mexico City. It was kind of like, I wanted to try it out. I wanted to try it out and see what life could look like living down there. And then when I came back and I moved for good, instead of kind of wanting to see what life could look like, I knew what I wanted my life to look like. And so I built my life around that. And those numbers didn't quite line up the way I thought they would. But some of it is like when I moved into my apartment, I love my apartment. It's beautiful. It's got a gorgeous view. I moved during the pandemic and I knew that I would be, Mexico City did a very stringent lockdown. So I knew I would be in, home more than I might be at another phase in my life. And so being in a beautiful apartment with a beautiful view was more important to me than it would have been two years before that, right? Um, now that a lot of people are coming to Mexico City from other places, the rent that we were getting three months ago, you really can't find in the city anymore. So when you make your plan, <laughs> and when you implement your plan, if there have been any changes in the city in the middle, there that could really impact what your budget's going to look like. Um, but it's still pursuing, right? I, I could still live in the city on the budget I set in 2019. It just wouldn't, my life wouldn't look the same way as it does right now, but I could live there easily on that budget. Right, yeah. And I love the, the idea of, okay, you could just start with a budget or you could start with the ideal lifestyle and then build that in place. And I right. think- there's something about actually living in a place for an extended period of time that allows you to make that refinement. You're, not, you're never really going to know until you try right. kind of thing. Um, and also the, the inflation. I don't know what inflation is like in Mexico, but in, in Grenada, it's pretty wild. What you might think you might spend on food is like in a rocket. So is that something that you're experiencing as well? Yes. And um, so inflation, uh, gentrification is going wild over here, but also Mexico City is a city that has a very, very wide 
gap between Mm -hmm. rich and poor. So what people ask things like, what does food cost? And food could be two, five, like two tacos for 50 cents, or food could be, you know, two people eating for $500. And so, and both of those you can find on the same street, right? Um, And so it's like, what does rent cost? What does food cost? Anything you want, right? Like I tell people all the time, <clears throat> it depends on what you want to spend and how you want to live, right? If you want really nice things, because there are a lot of really, really wealthy people in the city, the nice things cost a lot. But also because there's a large number of people who are not rich and who are basically living in poverty, you can get a lot of very inexpensive things as well. So you should have to figure out like where you comfortably fit in um, and like what life you want to live. You might not be able to afford the life you want or the life you imagined, or you may have, or the life you imagine may cost a lot less than you think, depending on where you fit kind of in the spectrum. Nice, I like that. About choosing a destination that has options in the Caribbean, it's, it's slightly less broad, yeah. the variety. But yeah, that's that's really interesting to, to factor in. And Stephanie, tell me about you, your your move abroad budget. How did you how did you navigate putting that together? Uh, mostly, I just looked at how much money do I have to spend. How much money am I okay with spending to live? Right? How much am I okay make you using as my spending budget? and then looked at places that fit into that number, right? When I first started living nomadically, right? My monthly budget was $1,200 a month. I've doubled, I I doubled that. And then I added some more onto it again. You know, I've increased that over time, but mostly I just looked at how much money do I have? (laughs) And then where can I live with that amount of money and still do the stuff that I like? Where, like, where where does that fit in? I started with the, the income and then worked my way backwards. Right. Yeah. I'm definitely in your school. I was like, if this is what I got, how's it going to work? Like other elements would be nice, but right now, if I want to get out now, this is what I'm working with. Um, And so one of the questions that I often see is like, how much money do I need to have saved? And obviously no one can really answer that because everyone has like a different approach to risk and like financial stability. But what, what do you typically advise people who feel like they really need like a lot of money in order to move? Some, some of our, uh, some women want to go and not do work for a long time, right? And then some women want to go and they're working, they're not even going to miss a, a day of work uh, because they work online or they work, you know, some different type of way. So I th- the first question to figure out how much of a runway do you need is like, how much money do you have coming in if you burn through this runway? So right. if you give yourself three months of cushion, and then those three months run out, what, where is the money going to come from afterwards? That it's, it's, it's hard to answer that question for people who don't have a source, right? Who don't yet know what their income source is. Uh, but if, if, you, if you're making a paycheck, right? If you have a paycheck and it comes to you every two weeks, maybe you feel comfortable with enough money to get yourself moved into a place. You're going to have to pay deposits. You're going to have to buy furniture. In some places, you're going to have to buy your refrigerator, your stove, right? Which is a new thing for Americans. In Costa Rica, you may even have to buy the cabinets in the kitchen, you know? So how much is all of that going to cost? And then you need to add on and how much do you feel safe with as a backup, as a plan B? It's a, that's a hard number. I like to have three to six months of backup money, uh, but some women that would make them super nervous and they would need a year, you know, they, I don't feel good unless I have a year's income saved, you know, before I go. It depends on your, I think it depends on your risk tolerance and your backup. My fallback is I come back to the US and I move in with my parents, right? Some people don't have a fallback and so they need more of a runway. I'm okay with having a shorter runway because I have these other things. Um, and so it's, it's, a, it's a question of the whole picture. Get a grasp of the whole picture. What if things go wrong? What if you don't like it? Uh, what if you love it? What if you want to ball out a little more? Uh, so the short, the, that was a lot to say. For me, I like three to six months, but I have income, right? I make money on the internet. And so I don't have to worry about 
the the worst case scenario for me is I just wait till my next you know payout yeah I love that and Rashida you were featured in CNBC was it as a kind of leading light of the fire movement like tell us about fire and how you knew that that was going to be part of your strategy whether it was for moving abroad or just in terms of lifestyle generally so I didn't I this whole video I guess my theme is like I didn't know I didn't know people weren't calling fire fire when I started saving for retirement um I wrote on my calendar sometime in my 30s that I like on on Google Cal I was like I want to retire my retirement date was like my 40th birthday and by the time I turned 40 I'd spent a year traveling the world and not working and the thing about not working is it don't make you want to go back to work like there's no there's nothing about not having to clock in or talk to anybody you don't want to talk to or do any of those things that makes you want to go back to that lifestyle i mean the only thing that would that could make you want i think could make some people want to go back is the check right um but i knew the check wouldn't be enough for me and so at that point it was like how much money do i have and what what lifestyle can I live with the money I have or the money I earn, like Stephanie said, um, so that I don't have to go back to my old life and, and working for people like I did before. So like retiring early was kind of an, I would say it's an accident, um, but, it, but I prepared myself for that accident for a long time. I, I've been saving for retirement since I was 18. So <laughs> when I stopped working 20 years later, it was kind of like, okay, well, there's some money there. Um, and then what is enough? And since I retired, people always challenge me on this, but since I retired, I have done things that have created income streams like Exodus Summit, which you mentioned earlier. Um, so I don't have to touch the money I have saved because there are income streams. Now, I still call myself retired most of the time because... <laughs> My favorite thing about my life is I do not talk to anyone I don't want to talk to. Nice. I love that for me. I love nice. that for me. I don't talk to anyone I don't want to talk to. I don't work with anyone I don't want to work with. And I don't work hard. I specialize in not working hard, in living a life of ease. And all the projects I do are things I'm passionate about, things that help Black women, and things that bring me joy. And I know that like there's that line that like, if you love what you do, it'll never be work. That's not true. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> I love what I do and it is still work. But when I consider how much work I do compared to how much work the average person does, I think it's fair to say that, you know, I'm semi-retired. I'm retired, semi-retired still. For those who don't know, what is the Exodus Summit and how did it come into being? Exodus Summit is something that Stephanie and I have run every year since 2020. Okay, so fun fact, Stephanie and I started working together in fall, winter of 2019. Um, we did a, a set of videos together, 12 videos interviewing women who had, um, who had moved abroad or taken sabbaticals. One of the women we interviewed in our interview was like, you guys should do a summit. And we were both like, no please. We are doing this video series and then goodbye. Right. Um, and then the next, I would say summer, maybe like July, Stephanie was like, hi, I think we should do a summit. And she created like a presentation, which she never sent me because she said we should do a summit. And I was like, okay. I'd forgotten that our interviewee had said that, but I was like, okay. Like worst case scenario, we try it and we fail. Right. And the summit, as she explained, was for women who wanted to take sabbaticals. Um, and so we started working on that. We did our first one in 2020. It's Black women only, women who want to take sabbaticals or move abroad. Our first year, we had 50-something speakers. <laughs> Woo, rookie mistake. Uh, but we loved it. We loved it. It went, uh, it was a week long. Um, and we did that in September of 2020. And then Stephanie and I actually met for the first time in person, like January or February of 2021. We we went through, we created a whole summit together with actually never meeting 
face to face ever. Um, we did it again in 2021. And in 2021, we brought back women who attended in 2020 and since attending in 2020 had moved abroad. Some of them might be familiar faces. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah. Women who had moved, who attended the first summit and moved abroad since then. And then this year, our theme is move abroad money, because one of the things we always hear from women is that they, and in, in all the expat groups, it's like, okay, but like, what do you do that allows you to move abroad? Mm -hmm. like, what's your job? What is your this? What is your that? And so we decided to put together a number of different paths for women. So different income streams, they can do either full-time or part-time to make more money um, to support them as they get ready to move abroad and why, while they're living abroad. So how can you create a business that you can do in the US if that's where you are, the UK, wherever, Grenada, wherever you are, um, and get ready to move. And so when you move abroad, you can still have income coming in and still do the same business. And so we're very excited about what this will look like this year. Yeah, no, I know that question of, oh, Stephanie, you tell me, but that question of finances, it, it's it's the number one, it's it's one priority at the front of people's minds, for sure. That's right. And we hear the question of, well, I want to move abroad. How do I get a job abroad? And we're like, no, we're not doing that. Okay. <laughs> there are there are people, we actually do have a, a speaker talking about getting a job but actually she got transferred, right? But right. we're like, no, you wanna do it a different way, right? That let's think about things a different way, especially in the US, people are used to doing things a certain way and they think that they have to do it that same way in a new place. We're like, no, things don't work that way. Uh, let's talk to you about the other ways that women have been able to fund this new life abroad. We're talking about entrepreneurship. We're talking about investment income. We're talking about gig work. Uh, we're talking about remote work and more traditional work you know, more traditional ways of having jobs, but not like, oh, I want to move to Mexico City. Let me get the Mexico City newspaper and find a job. Like that is not how, <laughs> that's not how most of us are going to get abroad. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No, but you're right. That does seem to be the default option. And I remember posting on a, on a group, something about whether people would be willing to work remotely in the Caribbean and folks just couldn't get their head around the fact that this was possible. Like you don't have to be employed by someone. You don't have to be working from nine to five. And for me, even working remotely, like it is amazing paid in an overseas currency in a country where things cost less, but to be like in front of your laptop for seven, eight hours a day, yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. You, you can make it better. If you're starting afresh, like make it brilliant. That's, that's my <laughs> approach. Make it really work for you. That's so right. what are your what are your top three slapped on approaches that you think women should should be considering? Thank you, Steph. <laughs> <laughs> so the session, our attendees so far are on the edge of their seats over is a session on virtual sex work, including nice. uh-huh. We have a phone sex operator and we have a woman who has made strong six-figure income selling feet pics on the internet and she said that these are places that are untapped for black women wow but Very it's, it's it. listen <laughs> we keep like saying other things and they're like but what about the feet picture our audience is just like but tell us more about the feed pictures every time we're like okay so we're adding this we're adding that they're like yes the pictures of my feet <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> and so it's this while we are very supportive of this work, the summit is more than that. The summit is more than virtual sexy work. We have um, women talking about freelance writing, um, about uh, options trading in the stock market. We have women talking about, that's a surprise, it hasn't been announced yet. Uh, um, we have women talking about a variety of topics. I think that some of the more popular ones, okay, after feet, what comes next, Steph? I think, um, well, so Adelia session right now on our yeah. platform, you can see what people are selecting. And right now Adelia session, which is on how much money is enough to, right. to retire or move to move abroad. Like how, how do you actually come up with the budget? So this isn't necessarily, it's not a session that's gonna make you money, but it's a mm -hmm. session that is really well fit with the other sessions. Um, that's a session that people are really excited about because we got we we got the message. We got the message. Save for retirement, inv invest for your future, right? But then 
uh, a lot of people die with that money just sitting there. Yes. How do you know when you can start using it? When do I use this money that I've been putting away for myself this whole time? Uh, so that session, I think, is one that um, our women are super excited about. Uh, um, we have another one about earning the salary you deserve. So if you have a job right now, how do you maximize the income from that job so that you can be less stressed about your move abroad, right? How do you get ready for that? And to Stephanie's point earlier about Adelia's talk and her her comment earlier about how she knew what her budget was, or you asked about that, one of the things that gets in women's way a lot is that generally in our capitalist societies, there's no such thing as enough money, right? There's no such thing as enough. So how much money do you need to move abroad? The answer for a lot of people is more than I have, right? But like, but what? <laughs> what is the number? And so many people fail themselves by not doing the math. If it's going to cost you this much to live, Stephanie's point, how much, how many months of expenses do you need? Like that's the number you can aim for, even if it's a, even if it's 18 months versus one month, that's the number you can aim for as opposed to more, right? Because there's no, there's no end in sight for more. And that's, that's where a lot of women are. And so I'm really excited about Adelia's talk where we're going to talk about how you figure out when you're comfortable saying this money is enough because I think that's one of the hardest parts about retiring early about making a big move like this is saying that like I have faith in the money I have I have faith in myself as a steward of money I have faith in my ability if I need to to make more money that's where people that's I'm not totally huge on mindset work but I think that is the mindset part that is important the ability to say I trust myself, right? I trust my money. Um, and that there's a gap there a lot of times for us in that we're just like more money than I have. So that talk is going to be good. Earning the salary you deserve so you can get more of that money to feel more confident in your move. We have a session on starting businesses abroad. Um, a woman who is going to be able to get residency in another country because she started a business in that country. So sometimes you need to have residency to start a business, but she's going to get residency because she started a business there. Um, so it's not necessarily about, it's about using the money you have to get what you want in multiple ways, right? So she's used money to start a business, which is going to make her money and get her residency. So there are a lot of exciting talks that we are like, Cannot Can't wait. wait. Yeah. Can't wait. See, I definitely have my uh my eye on the, the sex talk one, like virtual sex. Like that sounds pretty fun, but feet, that's even less work. I might check that one out too. <laughs> <laughs> it's in uh, the um setting up a business abroad one also is really interesting because I think for the Caribbean, that can also be a way to gain entry is so starting your own business. Um, and it's something that I'm really keen to encourage people to do because I think often when you do move, there can be that gentrifying effect. And what do you give in exchange for that, you know? And I think sometimes creating a business, creating employment, creating a positive social impact can be the way that you can add to a community rather than just extract. Um, right. So that's, that's exciting. That's right. And you're doing, so I think you're doing something secretively. Um, is your, is your, is your herb, you have an herb business that I didn't know about? Oh yeah, I do. I do. It's, it's kind of, um, it goes, it goes up and down, but yeah, I started a herbal tea company in Grenada, um, selling herbal teas to hotels and boutiques. Um, so yeah, that's one of the things that I'm doing. Um, yeah, there's multiple strings to my bow. And one of the things, I think it's the same as you, but getting the repeated question, how do I move abroad? How much money do I save? There's just so many ways in which it can be done. Um, that I think just making people aware of the endless opportunities that they can decide to explore rather than thinking, how do I find a job abroad? Yeah, right. I mean, yeah, it's so right. unjoyful generally. Yes, <laughs> it's so unjoyful. And I think that some people underestimate what work looks like in some other countries. Like in Mexico, mm -hmm. the minimum wage is $8 a day and the hours are close to like 16. Whoa. That's great. Well, so working for like 50 cents an hour isn't my jam, right? So I don't see myself getting a job on the ground, like an actual job. Although I do have a work permit now on accident. 
so many things happen on accident. I don't know why they pressed the wrong button when I went for residency and I have a work. It says permission. I have permission to work. But um, yeah, people talk about it. Like, how can I get a job? And it's like, you know, you're going to be sorely disappointed yes. in a lot of these places also, getting jobs there. Having worked abroad, like my first job out of university was working in Milan. And the other thing that you don't, the people, I mean, yes, it's exotic and beautiful, but adjusting to the cultural differences as well, that is labor in and of itself. Mm -hmm. And do you really want that? That's also something to reflect on. So not to, not to throw shade on it. And I think sometimes if you can move abroad on someone else's dime, <laughs> And get a salary and then figure your next move that that's great but know what the next step is know that there yes. are multiple other next steps know what the next step is and while i know that moving abroad is important for some it's, it was important for me it's important for so many of us i think it's really important to have it's also important to have a sustainable plan right yeah. and working at a place for the equivalent of 50 cents an hour and maybe tips is not a sustainable plan for most people that I know, right? Um, and so how do you create a plan, which is why our event is not just about getting money to move you there, but getting money that you can rely on while you are there, getting money that will hold you through while you're there because you don't wanna move somewhere and then be like, and now where will the, where will the money come from? And now what? <laughs> I am here. I am in my, whatever your paradise is. I am in my paradise without any money, right? You want to have an income stream that will last you. And so that's one of the reasons we're really excited about this is where we've provided some ways that people can fund their lifestyles long-term. Yeah, absolutely. And I also think like a lot of the work starts before you leave. Like if you want to have a sustainable move abroad, you mm -hmm. need to kind of start doing the work beforehand, whether it's financial, whether it's mindset. I mean, yeah, mindset manifesting. I'm not huge fans of those either, but that shift, you kind of want to start making that as early as possible so that you are able to just flow into it abroad. So I think, mm -hmm. yeah, your sessions are going to inspire so many people and take the fear out of it. I think that's the one thing that holds people back from moving is feeling like there's a whole lot of unknowns. Whereas this mm -hmm. knocks them out of the park. Yeah, it does. They're going to come away with a strategy, right? They're going to come away with not just some inspiration. They'll come away with a strategy and hopefully they'll come away with the community. I think we have the best community on <laughs> Zoe's part of our community. I think yeah. that there's, there's nothing like it in the world. If you're a Black woman who is uh, looking to do things a different way, you're welcome to join us. The link to Exodus Summit is in the description of the video. Zoe's link will give her an affiliate commission on your ticket purchase. So it's a way of supporting her channel for her work that she's done uh, and is continuing to do. Uh, and it's a way to make sure that you get your move abroad money plan together. Yeah, we love what we do. We love the summit and we love that you're you're an alum of the summit and like a former speaker and, and alum, alumna, yeah. And uh, yeah, your yeah. community yeah. is amazing. And the affiliate link does not cost you anymore. You do not get, you do not pay any more money, but Zoe gets a little piece because she referred you to us. Yes. Um, yeah. no, so I love, I love what you guys are doing. I had to have you, my expertise, right? I can talk about many things, but I don't like to talk about what I don't know. I think you two are the doyens of this and the fact that you have a whole summit about it. There's no way that I can, could not point people in your direction. And I remember what it was like sitting in, in on the summit in 2020, in the middle of all the madness, really wanting to make, well, knowing that I was gonna make the move. And someone said, listen, they're also called Exodus. You should check them out because they're also black about black women. Um, but it's just really like immersing yourself in other black women who are off the same intention. And you're surrounded by people who think you're kind of crazy. And like, why would you leave? It's really empowering to just have that vibe of people who are doing it no matter what. So even if you don't end up making a move in six months time or a year's time, just starting to build that network and just seeing that it can be done is so powerful. So I bow down to you for creating Aww. this movement, this platform, it's, it's so important. Um, but what you said before is really important. We know some stuff, but we don't know everything, which is why we're, we, one of the things we love about the summit is bringing in experts who can be like, this is what I do. I, we are not bringing in people who are making money by showing people how to make money. We're bringing in people who are making money doing a thing. Like you do this thing and you do it well enough that you can teach it. Please teach it to our audience, right? Like we don't know how to do, I don't know how to create 
trips, but we have someone, we have a, a travelpreneur coming who can tell you, ooh, she'll give you some details about how to create trips and do things that, that sell. Um, because we know that just like there's a gap for us, there's a gap for a lot of people in that knowledge and knowing how to do something and comfortably learning how to do something in a comfortable environment with your friends is, is the way to get kickstarted. One of the things that we're excited about too is our accountability groups that are coming out of the summit. Um, every, for, for last year and this year we did accountability and this year we'll do accountability groups. This year, they're gonna be based on the type of income stream you want to earn. And so we're giving people the opportunity to get together um, in larger in smaller groups of the whole summit for however long they want to, um, to meet up and talk about their plans and to work on it together. Because we tell people all the time that our summit is not for inspiration. Our summit is for action and implementation. So yes, come get inspired if you want to, but also like, what you going to do with those notes you took? right? Like, are you going to take notes all weekend and then close the notebook and never look at it again? Because you're not going to get more money by doing that, right? You're going to, you're going to expand your income streams. If you come to the summit, if you take the notes, if you figure out which income stream you want to pursue, and then you and your crew figure out together, maybe you all do it separately together, right? You say, I'm going to do this business. You're going to do this business too. What do you know? How do we figure out the next, you know what I mean? Like you do it together. You hold each other accountable. That's how you make it happen. That's how you implement. That's how you take action. And that's how you get beyond inspiration to, you know, a fatter wallet. And building that ecosystem as you go, right? Because if you can yes. make it happen virtually, someone in Philadelphia, someone in London, whatever, mm -hmm. who's to say that can't continue to support you once you're bored as well. So yes, so exciting. I yeah, we're very, we're very excited about it. I know that like a week after the summit, there's going to be so many more Black women's feet on the internet than there are right now. <laughs> and I love it already. I love already. I'm like, yes, get that money. <laughs> but it's, it's so awesome to be to do a thing where you get to see people's successes you know this yeah. Zoe right where it's so awesome to be able to see people's wins and take credit for the wins and and celebrate with them uh there's nothing like it that's that's one of the wonderful things about like that's the kind of work that we do you get to see people's wins and and see them living and thriving and looking free and and smiling and dancing you know you so you help people move to the in particular to the Caribbean where I, I mean, they just <laughs> get there and become a new person, right? We get to see people take off the, the whatever and take off the things that they've been wearing around the, the, the coats, the shackles, right? That they've been wearing, the, the things that have been binding them up and just be free and live. Uh, there's nothing like it. It's, it's, I'm so glad that we do this kind of work. I'm so glad because we get to see the results and see the, the, the change. Yeah. And as you're saying, I'm watching this silver play button behind your shoulder. <laughs> yes. Right. <laughs> YouTube is beaming away. So yes. yes, I mean, I was there for your, for your win, you're celebrating your win, but to see that, that kind of shows it is a movement. It's happening. And mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's a movement. I don't know if we, when you started, did you have an idea like how many people you thought you were going to be able to reach? Like, seriously, I started my YouTube channel because I thought there were eight women who needed some information and I didn't want to tell, tell them each individually. Right. <laughs> like, yeah, I, didn't I, didn't even want, I didn't even want to be on YouTube. I'm not doing YouTube. I'm not putting my face on the internet. Are you crazy? <laughs> Two years late, I've got an interview coming out with the BBC. So it's a thing. It's a thing. It's not going away. And I think the more that we empower each other to be at the forefront of that movement, the better. The better it is for everyone. That's yeah. right. It is yeah. a movement. Yeah. Well, some people don't are like afraid to use the word, but it is a movement. It is a yeah. movement. And I think it's really important that we come to the movement as we are. So, so you know, um, my parents are from the Caribbean. I and they they immigrated to the UK before the US. And so for them, for a long time, the idea of like leaving one of these like countries that have been held up as an ideal for so long um, is kind of insane. And sometimes every once in a while, I'll talk to a woman in the US who's like, I talked about me every day. And I, I know I have a feeling her parents are immigrants, but I didn't ask. But her response was, 
why would you ever move out of America? And I'm like, it's okay. You don't like, not everyone is going to understand, but for those of us that understand and are coming from the same background who know that like, it's really hard to leave behind what your parents fought for, right? Like it's, it's really hard to leave behind the history of being in some of these countries and how we got here. But sometimes the really hard thing is the best thing for you and coming together like in our group where everybody looks like us and everybody doesn't think the same, right? Like not, not everyone is um, interested in the same paths or the same places or moving for the same reason, but knowing that I don't have to have your reason to support your reason, right? Like you, you look like me and I want you to win is the theme that constantly goes through our group, even when we're not. So it's a place where we're understood, even when no one outside of our group, like no one in our real lives right. understands what's happening. People, the black women in Exodus summit are supported 100% by the other women in the group, because that's what we're here for. Right. Yeah, totally. And I think for me, like two years in, I'm like so, <laughs> so over the conversation of why to move. To me, it's just so clear. Like if you don't get it, that's cool. Carry on right. doing you. But for those who do get it, we really need to know how, how, when, let's make it happen. Let's not talk about it and go around in circles. Let's just action it and, and thrive. So yeah, it's just awesome to be around other people who are doing the same thing. So mm -hmm. thank you so much for taking the time to chat to me virtually. I will definitely be there on the phone text session and probably the foot one too and a few others as well um yes. and anyone else who wants to definitely check out the link subscribe so, stephanie remind us of the name of your channel my channel is stephanie perry it's easy <laughs> oh and but i got a house sitter i guess I'm, I'm supposed to say more words i'm um, yeah. a house sitter uh so you'll see videos on my channel about house sitting and about bopping around if you want to take some time and try some different places out if you don't want to uh, recreate what you have in the U.S. You want to try a different life with a different um, idea of what your days and what your life can look like. My YouTube channel is Stephanie Perry. Awesome. And Rashida? Your I am at Sheeta's on the Loose. Um, I talk on my channel about my life living in Mexico City. I talk about career breaks and um, I really try to help Black women in different ways. Um, one-on-one -on -one coaching, through courses, et cetera, help them leave behind the things they want to leave behind. So I help them kind of shed the dead skin, whatever that is for them. Um, because I love nothing more than a free black woman, right? Like whatever that means to you, that's where I want you to be. And so both Stephanie and I work really hard all year long. We don't work really hard. We work all year long <laughs> to help black women as, as they appear in our lives to help Black women get to where they want to be, but Exodus Summit is our baby Ooh, in the fall that really makes a huge impact. We have a thousand women registered already as of this week. We have a thousand women. I love that. Which is wild to us because when we first did it, we had no idea. We were like, is anyone going to sign up for this? Sure. Someone, someone will come. We don't know. <laughs> um. And that was, and that was three years later. And every year um, it exceeds our expectations. Yes. Yeah. Well, I def definitely recommend people joining the summit, joining your Facebook page. I know that you did a pretty fabulous meetup in Mexico with yachts and the whole nine yards. So yeah, there, there's many ways to connect with the Exodus um, movement. So I'll put those links in the description and yeah, I'll just look forward to watching what comes next because I'm sure it's going to be epic. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you for having us on here to talk our talk. We love, we love hanging out with you, Zoe. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm glad, I, I know it's hot for you in Grenada, but I'm so glad. <laughs> I'm so glad. I love to see you and your kids living your lives and, and, and loving your lives down there in the Caribbean.